Hello everybody and welcome. Welcome to Jim's 5am club and today I come to you from a location close to my home. I've come for a bit of a bushwalk and as you can see there's a little creek behind me and it's uh, full of water. It's been raining uh, for the past few months and what was once a dry creek bed is now a little uh, overflowed pond which uh, you could probably even swim in if you had the, uh, the, the courage. But it's a, it's a beautiful place, it's close to my house, it's, uh, it's a bushland area and it was only two weeks ago that I was up here with my daughter, her husband and my granddaughter and we uh, came across a patch of uh, beautiful flowers. Um, but uh, those flowers, I came back today with my granddaughter and those flowers have since gone. So it's all very, very seasonal. Um, this, uh, the floral uh, gifts, the floral gifts. And um, it's something that uh, I'll look forward to coming to next year and trying to uh, see the flowers when they're uh, at their very uh, most, the most beautiful. So what do we talk about today? I'm going to pick a pretty uh, tricky topic to talk about today. Um, last night I was at uh, fellowship at uh, Parramatta Church and we were talking about uh, the history of the church, uh, plunder and, and all the, uh, the challenges that uh, Christianity has faced over the years. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was that um, the church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople was uh, plundered by the, uh, by the Crusaders um, back, back in 1100, I think, 1100 and something, I forget the actual date. Um, no, it was actually in the 13, 1300s, 1300s and it was plundered. So the Crusaders were standing at the gate, the gates there of Constantinople, and Constantinople, which was the, uh, the, um, the, the, the capital of the Eastern, Eastern Church of the Eastern Roman Empire. Just careful, Annabelle, in case you fall into the water. Um, so Constantinople had more wealth, listen to this one here, had more wealth than all the rest of Europe. Or sorry, more, so it had, say, I think it was about 50% or 60% of the wealth of all of Europe was in, uh, is it was in this one city, was in this one uh, area. And the plunder, the plunder went on for months and months and months and tons, ton, tons of gold, silver, um, uh, vestments, uh, uh, jewellery, um, ivory, um, uh, relics, books, you name it, was plundered from uh, Constantinople back in, in, the, in the time of the, uh, the Crusaders. And uh, one of the things that we talked about last night at Fellowship was that uh, this plunder, this massive wealth transfer, was uh, was taken to Europe over months and months of uh, of uh, pillage? Mm, what's that sound? Just wait on, just stay there. Papu, what's and that sound? I'm not sure, darling, what the sound is, but uh, just stay there for a second, and I'll finish off my 5 a.m. club. So a lot of this plunder, a lot of this wealth, a lot of this transfer was taken to Europe. <laughs> And this wealth actually funded, funded the, building the building of over 800 churches in Europe. Um, a lot of the relics that were taken from Constantinople were used to, uh, it, to it was you were used in the churches that were built. For example, the uh, the uh, the crown of thorns ended up finding a home at. Uh, Notre Dame and Saint Ch Chapelle in France. So these relics, this wealth, was transferred from uh, Constantinople to the rest, to the west, to the west. We we can say 
But not only was the transfer a, a massive transfer, there was also a transfer of people, knowledge, a lot of the artisans, a lot of the silversmiths, a lot of the, uh, the, the, no, the nobility that were housed and lived in Constantinople, moved and w basically went to, um, to um, uh, places like Florence. Um, and Florence, where else was there? It was Florence uh, and, uh, and Venice and Venice and these families uh, were the, uh, the foundational families of the nobility in a lot of these countries. So a lot of these silversmiths, a lot of these artisans, uh, artists, um, people, sculptors, all went, all went and transferred from one place to another and with them was a skills transfer, a knowledge transfer, which was never seen before in, 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 the, uh, in the history of mankind. But the big point that I wanted to make is that uh, during these times, it was the, um, it was the Renaissance, the, the birth of the Renaissance, the, uh, the Renaissance period in Western Europe, of the, the period of enlightenment. And what a lot of people don't understand is that um, while the West had, a, uh, a, had its dark ages, the Eastern Church never had these dark ages because uh, Christianity um, prospered for over a thousand years in, uh, in the East, in Constantinople. Careful, edible. Stay, stay where you are. And um, what had actually happened is with the plunder, there was a transfer of, of knowledge with the books. A lot of the classics, a lot of the Greek classics, a lot of the philosophy, the mathematics, the, uh, the study of the universe, the astronomy, the medicine, all of this applied and, and, um, and uh, gathered knowledge was transferred from one part of the, of, uh, the world to another. And later on, when the Arabs um, um, attacked Constantinople, they also took their fair share of books and were able to uh, take a lot of the ancient knowledge and translate it into their languages. So a lot of the stuff that was, uh, that was in the Greek, Greek language, was translated to Latin, to uh, Arabic, and to other language. And there was this massive, massive transfer of wealth and knowledge whilst the Greeks were uh, under, under pressure and uh, then subsequently uh, were overwhelmed and overtaken by the Turks for, for 400 years. So we had a, um, a big movement. So just using um, golf terms, there was a... Uh, um, you know, the Greeks went back for 400 years and the West went forward for 400 years, which meant there was a huge change of uh, knowledge and wealth uh, at the expense of the Greeks, but at the benefit of the West. Anyway, so uh, that's, that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, a lot of the, uh, the knowledge that, that the Greeks had acquired... Uh, don't, don't turn that. Don't turn that. Don't move that, because otherwise my mic will go off. That, that, that's the only reason I'm telling you not to do it. I've got my little helper here, Annabelle. As you can see, she's got her glasses on. She's got the mic wires <laughs> caught up in her glasses. We're having a bit of fun here <laughs> with Vapuli, aren't we? You're going to say something to uh, to the mic. You, you want to say something? You going to say hello? Talk, talk into the mic, and we'll hear it later on. Anyway, I'll continue talking. If you want to talk, you can talk whenever you want to. So that's basically it. That's my little um, Jim's 5am club from this wonderful location with the help of my wonderful uh, assistant, Annabelle, Annabelle McMahon. And uh, we're just talking, talking about the plunder that occurred in Constantinople, which is now Istanbul. And there was a magnificent, a huge community there. And 
to buy a massive, glasses. massive base of wealth in terms of uh, in terms of uh, assets as well as knowledge that ended up moving from uh, Istanbul, Constantinople, back across to Europe, to Italy, to Spain, to uh, to uh, um, France, and to other countries. And I guess with that was the spread of Greek thought, of West, at which now beca then became Western thought. And uh, so the good thing is that it was transferred and it moved on. The sad thing is, you okay there? The sad thing is that it, uh, that it came at the expense of a community and a, a, a country. All right then, let's finish off. Let's finish off with our positive affirmation. Stand up, Annabelle. I'm alive, I am well, and I feel great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, and let's never forget. Don't go too far down. Let's never forget. The, what is it? That was a bee. A bee, was it? Yeah. All right, don't worry. And let's never forget the contribution that the Eastern Church, that the ancient Greeks actually made to... Uh, to the rest of the world so all that we have today is a consequence of that transfer of knowledge and um, it all continues so that's why we say that the Greek thought has continued and it makes up a lot of the way we think today and the way we believe in our lifestyle and we must never forget that anyway take care bye for now and we'll I'll see you again tomorrow from some other place some other beautiful place in Sydney, and we'll come to you with another wonderful message. Anyway, say bye bye, Bet Annabelle. Say bye bye. Bye bye. And see you later. Do you like that? And uh, we'll 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 talk again. Bye for now. Bye for now. How cute. <laughs>